Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilas, and this is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube covering all aspects of the game and aims to provide insights and resources to help you improve your game as engineer. Each episode usually starts as a workshop session streamed live on my Twitch channel. This is over at twitch.tv slash Nilaus. You're welcome to drop by. Link is in the description below. Usually each episode starts with a workshop session streamed live on my Twitch channel. This is twitch.tv slash Nilaus. The link is in the description below. Usually this takes place on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central European time. Feel free to drop by and help decide, design and discuss upcoming guides. If you like this video and this type of tutorial, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Ideas, comments and feedback are very welcome, so leave them in the comment section below or join the Discord server. The objective of this video is to show you how you can structure your base using city blocks. This is a concept that I have popularized at least, not necessarily invented, but popularized several years ago. And I've been using it in many of my bases since then. I feel that it, it has a number of advantages and structures that I really like. So it's about time for me to do a tutorial so you can understand it and use it as well. This tutorial will be slightly different as I base it on, a, on previous Let's Plays on my YouTube channel, specifically Train World and Train Megabase, as well as uh, Escape from Novice. Let's dive in. So this video will cover a number of different topics. This video will cover a number of topics of the purpose of city blocks, Soviet oriented architect that it's based on, the sizing and alignment, when and how to get started, how to integrate trains, how to integrate the logistic network, and also sort of wrapping up with some advantages and disadvantages of this train so that you have an idea of when and when, when to use it and when not to use it. Let's start by just zooming in and having a look at the space. This is my train megabase and you can see that it has a lot of city blocks and each city block is characterized as follows you can fortunately not quite have it on the screen at any given time it is 100 by 100 tiles like this and it is delimited by a path around it it has large power poles these four large power poles out here in the center and in most cases all but that case actually it has four rubber ports to cover to cover this entire city block in rubber port area. So when we zoom out and look at the rubber port coverage, we can see that everything is covered by a logistics network because every single grid is useful. Now, before we dive into sort of how to actually structure it, then let's talk about the purpose. Why build city blocks? What is it that's so good about city blocks in my purpose, in my opinion, at least? Well, I think the, the first thing is an aesthetic uh, aesthetic idea. If you like squares, you're going to like city blocks. That's sort of the aesthetic feel. You can see what's going on. It's very clear what where things are located. It It's easy to structure things so that, for example, you can build a solar panel like this, and it fills up the entirety of a city block. And that means if you want more of them, you can just have the same design and you know exactly that it will fit in the next city block instead of aligning it towards other things. Uh, the other one is, uh, is is a very, very important aspect. And it's actually the main point that I need to when you build a base like this, and suddenly low density structures are running out, then it is relatively easy to figure out where the issue is, because you just have to find the low density structures to figure out why is it not working? Oh, it wasn't receiving any copper it was a good example, actually. So that means you have this opportunity to zoom in, but also zoom out. So at this point, we can look at the entire base and the operations of the base. But if I want to look in a specific thing, then I won't get it confused because any given location will only do one thing. This will only take iron ore in, only get iron plates out. That's it. No more, no less. And every, every single one is exactly like that. So we have red circuits. It takes the raw materials in, it gets red circuits out. It doesn't do a million other things. It just does one thing. Which means that when you build multiple of these, it copy paste them. But it also means that when you are going in here, you can see, all right, if I want to see how my refined concrete production is going, then I take a look at this location and, and that's all I need to take a look at. And and that level of extraction becomes incredibly useful when you build a large dispersed base. And this one has uh, some quirks because I don't have a, 
a structure of where I build things. I deliberately build things wherever I feel like it. So it will be the same things like we have copper down here, but we also have copper up here. Uh, we have green circuits down there. We have green circuits up here. We have green circuits in many places as well. So that's kind of something to keep in mind as well. But the overall idea here is that we can we can zoom in and when we zoom in and design, we don't have to we don't have to deal with the rest of the world because we only met, we only deal with the inputs and the outputs for the city block and it is completely delimited from the rest of the world. And that leads us into sort of where it comes from. So this uh, idea is something that uh, it's it's based on the service oriented uh, design within software design and uh, that's basically when you have a service then you can build the service and that's basically what you do here this is a service that uh, operates here it has some inputs and it has some outputs but from an from a zoomed out look all you need to know is the inputs and outputs you don't need to know how it works this gets particularly uh, relevant when you take some more advanced when i'm doing this design for the purple science I'm going to go into nitty gritty details of balancing belts and making sure that the flow is okay. But one, once that's done, I can completely forget about it, zoom out and just know that as long as I have the inputs coming, I will have purple signs coming out. And only when I see that purple signs is drying up, for example, then it's time for me to sort of open the service and start looking inside and debug it. And I feel that's a, an incredibly useful feature of, of this build that I can zoom out and simply forget all the weirdness of the purple signs as long as it works and only when it doesn't work do I need to zoom in again. So I think that's uh, incredibly powerful. In this case it works brilliantly together with the mod logistics train network because I can manage many to many connections but you don't need to have that as well. It, it just gives a, a nice abstraction of knowing that if I manage the inputs of a city block the output will be correct. And uh, only then will you need to, if you need to upgrade it or change some parameters, then you need to dig in and figure out inside the box or inside the service. So now we know a bit about the purpose of the city box, where it comes from, the, the key attributes in terms of just the zooming in and the abstraction level it provides and the aesthetic field. It also has the added advantage of you always have your walking path or driving path, the sacred path, which uh, must be respected and you have it down here everywhere that means you can drive around the base easily without hitting any uh, any power poles you have easy access to any and all things and everything is delimited inside these locations let's have a look at the first city block because the first city block is the most important one like anything you built your city block and you have have problems i have i, I don't know how many times i've had people uh, coming into my chat or in my comment section or discord and saying why does it not align with the trains so let's start with the with the train blueprints let's start with the elephant in the room trains are weird because they can't they can only be placed on a two by two grid while large power poles can be placed on a one to one grid that means you can for example build it like this but you can also build it Those are kind of the two different locations, or you could also build it here. So anywhere in here, you can place the large power pole. But if you have a specific train design in mind, it's very important that you make sure that you build it correct. Let's say worst case is something like this. So it's in one direction it fits, but in the other direction it doesn't fit. And if you build your city blocks and build this many city blocks, maybe even less and realize that the whole thing is shifted off to one tile to the right or to the left there is no way to fix it you just have to start over move the whole thing and uh, that can be rather unfortunate for that purpose i always have a blueprint measuring stick and alignment stick so if i want to make my first city block i start by making this this will give me the exact length of the large power poles and it'll also give me and making sure that by putting this one in even even if it's a ghostly one if you look at it i cannot misplace this one because the trains will make it jump two by two tiles if i did this blueprint without 
then you can see it'll jump by one tile at a time and then there's a chance that you're going to misplace it so do start with this measuring stick and if we want to make the blueprint ourselves then basically like this so we now have four power poles in length up and the other way as well and there we have it that's a uh, that's the size and structure of a city block and now we know that it's aligned i always put red and green wires as part of the blueprint because then you have it later on sometimes and i think i do that in this space look at here i am carrying some signals here that i'm using to manage my trains and also keep track of some materials on these wires so that's something beneficial for more advanced circuit networks so that's why it's easier to build it up front and then then you have it instead of adding it later because that's that's very painful so we have a city block and uh, the unique thing about the city block please give me a robo port do i not have a robo port with me yes I, of course so the thing with the robo port is or actually i'm going to take this part so i'm going to build the sacred path first the way you do the first one two from here one two This will give us the sacred path to surround Oops. one, two, there. One, two. Much easier just to build it with uh, with ghosts so that I don't have to use a million times to build it there. So with that done, now we can use our rover ports, rover ports start. And if I make them exactly like that, exactly hit the middle of the road, then it will exactly hit the middle of the road here. It will exactly hit the middle of the road and it'll exactly hit the middle of the road. And of course we need some power poles as well. These can be replaced with other power poles if you want to, need to later on, if you build something. And what you basically have now is repeatable pattern this is the very core of it uh is that really okay one two one two something like this yeah and you can then build it next to it you can see that if you build it exactly correct then the robot ports will align of course we don't have power because it's not connected Real grid. That one. So now it has power. And we'll just build these two. And that is at the very core the city block. Look at this part. Looks good. And if I look out on my base, you can see the very same structure with these kind of circles everywhere. They are slightly slanted somewhere. But generally, it has these nice circles as well. That's the basic of the very first city block, how you do it. One of the things that you want to save, if, even when you have this built, yeah, you know, there's many different places you can build it. And when you look at your starter base, you have to start looking at where do you want to place the first city block. For example, if you have a location like this, nice big oil patch, then it makes sense for you to build the city block so that it is this oil patch is contained because you can't move oil patches normal ore patches don't care about it because you will eventually run those out and water if you're you're building a main bus and you're building straight towards big water uh, big water masses of water it could be difficult or it could, could be tiresome to then fill it so also just start planning ahead but mainly plan for water for, for oil because you can't move the oil so try to sort of say oil should be within one city block here i have more of a complete city block build you can see how well it aligns with what we have i have just included the ones out on the outside i've added some lights as well i've added in the top right hand corner the radar that's just where i'd like to have it no particular reason that's just where it ended up being for whatever reason and that's going to be our 
et city block pattern. A default city block pattern. Let's see. Go to the thing. And there. You can also have more advanced city blocks. Uh, for example, I have. Yeah. Solar panels built pretty much at ratio. And you can build it exactly like this if you want to. Misplaced. And that's a. Uh, those are kind of the key attributes. Let's see. Do we also have one with. Here, we have some delimitation with hazardous concrete, refined concrete, just to make it even better. It's nice, but it's uh, unnecessary. Those are something you come up with yourself. And I'm going to do this one just to give you an idea what it looks like. So refined concrete in the middle, find hazardous concrete, and then concrete, and then you can make stone bricks in the middle. That's up to you how you want to do it. Now before we dive into how to integrate trains and logistics network and the strengths and weaknesses of uh, the city block design, it would not be possible for me to run this channel the way I do right now without the support of the Patreon supporters. So thank you very much. If you want to support the work I do here and the channel in general, then pledging on Patreon is a great way to do it. Link in the description below. Thank you. Now here we have a different world. This is my welcome to Factorio world. And I want to use this as a base to illustrate how I can integrate trains and in very smoothly into a design. Also how I can integrate the main bus and logistics network all in one. So as you can see here, I have only one entrance to my base for trains. It comes in from one side. It goes into stackers and it follows up here. And then I have only one for trains. And if you are going to build this kind of thing, uh, I would suggest doing one four trains. They fit quite nicely within a city block. I don't think you can fit in two eight trains in any reasonable way. And so one four trains, they actually work quite well. So this uh, this design here is work in in the way that it it actually stacks up train here trains here, and then I only have iron on this side. And only goes in on the side so I can treat this as one station and these ones will then open and close as they will it's a different matter but the idea here is that I have I have trains coming in on different city block and then it feeds into this location which has an acute lack of lights similarly on the other side I have copper coming in here again one four trains and they are working also here we have coal coming in and it works uh, really well. You have uranium coming in here. Yep. So basically we just take trains going in and out. They work really well with 1-4 trains, also liquid trains. And it's it's easy to integrate into this. And what I've done here is just uh, use the excess space for solar panels. It's not quite enough to power the base. It's the nuclear. Uh, this was just uh, to illustrate you how it works. Also how to integrate a main bus. So the, I, in this case, you can see here the main bus is flowing. It has a dedicated city block. And then I have dedicated city blocks for my smelting columns. And that's basically now I can I can show you the same that I've shown before. I know exactly what's going on in each of these locations. This is my liquefaction. This is my, oil, my uranium processing, red circuits, my green circuits. They're all working very well. And it's this, this is my oil mess but you know you can't not all of it is uh, structured and then it goes continues and then it ends up with the rocket silo at the end of the bus okay so this is very much designed specifically to the size and not sort of infinitely expandable those just one way of, of illustrating how you can integrate trains the other base that i show on the train well has a much more comprehensive world but this one is not using any mods logistics train network however using logistics train network is a massive advantage it is it it just works extremely well with city blocks because you don't have to place them near each other you can let the logistic train network do the routing for you if you are unsure about that mod then i do have several tutorials actually on my channel on how that works and now we're back here in our train world where we can see the various uh, things going on and i just want to emphasize just i've shown this before how well the logistics network integrates with this with the city blocks and that makes it easy to cover everything with the absolute minimum amount of 
rubber ports. And in a size like this, the minimum amount of rubber ports needed is, um, I think that's the best way of looking at it here. Uh, this is 4,000 rubber ports. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of, uh, of using city blocks. Uh, let's start, of course, with the advantages, because I think that it, uh, I like it. I don't do it, use it always, but it, uh, it does have, this gives you some structure and I like structure. And that's kind of the first one. It gives you structure. It compartmentalizes the base through dedicated city blocks. As I mentioned, you can say this one is doing is doing one thing and one thing only. And uh, that just appeals to me that I can zoom in, build something, especially for a let's play where I want to have some dedicated goals for each episode. Then I can zoom in and just work entirely within a city block in an episode. Maybe not this one can take a whole episode, but uh, certainly some can take a whole episode to design. And then I can zoom out and we can move on to the next next design. It also has a clear aesthetic style, whether you like it or not. This is very gray, very Death Star-like, but I like this one. The square thing is just a factorial thing. Uh, everything is built on a square grid, so things have a tendency to become square quite easily. It's extremely easy to scale if you follow the series of my train megabase, and I know that some comments were like, ah, you're just stamping down blueprints. And that's kind of the, exactly the point of, of this one here, that when you have blueprints, such as what we have here. The city block blueprint, the solar blueprint, the intersections, the train stations, the intersections, the turns, the overlays, you know, it becomes like, and over here as well, we also have some additional designs here with just the underlays, just to make sure that it, it's super easy to make. Then you can do everything from, well, not everything, but you can scale up a lot of things from the network. Likewise, for example, here's a nuclear reactor build. It's a six reactor build squeezed in here. There's plenty of room, excess room, and this is not exactly built to ratio. There's some flaws in it, so don't go all, hey, I want that group in, because it's not a good one. But the great thing is that once I have this one built, it becomes so easy to say, I need more power, and then I just stamp it down here, here, and here it becomes incredibly easy because you already have the structure for the city blocks <clears throat> except for the water but that's a different matter now let's uh let's also be honest about it there are of course big disadvantages as well this is if you have followed my train world the predecessor to the train megabase where i start this up the first sort of the first progression towards actually having a train network now it is um it takes a lot of space and it takes a lot of planning. So when you start building it, the first place I started building this one, it still bears sort of the, some of the mess of uh, of this part. It it becomes incredibly difficult that you, when you build the green circuit, you have to build it in a different location and then bring it in with train. And then you build the first iron and you build it somewhere else and the first copper. So this is like the first thing I did. I built my hub, I built green circuits, I built some iron, some copper, I can't even remember where I built the steel. I might have just built some hacked steel somewhere, or maybe that was here and have been removed since then. And over here, I built some default red because this one was deep in biter territory by then. And this is something you have to keep in mind that you need a lot of space for city blocks, and a lot of space will be dead in your base. Look at if we look at it here. This is not very compact. Look at look at this for example. All it does is take a bit of heavy oil in and get a bit of lubricant out and that's it complete waste of space and likewise these it could be way bigger but i i like this way of doing it more spread out more modular it's easy to uh, to, to scale up Just add add more another thing that is uh, kind of obvious here it's very difficult to fit trains i am having one four trains and they don't deadlock in this base, as far as I can tell. We've not had any deadlocks for many, many hours, but they do have a tendency to... The blocks here are difficult to fit in. So, a nice little train jumping by. You can see that they are not really achieving their optimal speed because there's so many points that they have to wait. This is the one four trains, you can fit them in to city blocks easily, but you can't fit in larger trains with eight wagons. And sometimes you want that for, specifically, copper, iron, those are kind of raw materials. Uh, it's a lot of trains to get. Yeah, for example, this would should, in my opinion, just have been a 1-8 train, but I don't have that and I can't fit it in. So we're going to have to have twice as many trains in the network to achieve the same. And that means more congestion in the network. So 
do keep it in mind that you will have a lot of trains in this case if we just look at how many trains i have in this one is that a train yeah um here yeah that's a lot of trains about 300 trains is currently operational they're all working pretty much all the time so that's uh, something to keep in mind that trains can be hard to fit especially larger trains it takes a lot of space it is not an alternative to a bus i've seen people like oh should i go main bus or should i go city blocks if they are not altern alternatives city blocks is a way to structure structure things but it doesn't solve the immediate problem of distributing materials when you get to sort of mid game and you for example have logistics train network then you can say okay do i want to expand my bus or do i want to transition to a service oriented architecture with logistic train network feeding separate city blocks that's uh, one of those things and of course you have the other disadvantage that maybe you think it looks good but your bases will have a tendency to kind of look the same because you are structuring everything in the same way you can build bigger city blocks that's totally fine you can do whatever you want i'm just presenting what i've decided to uh, build the size of it i've one time built it slightly different i've really regretted it and uh, for the rest of that series the the 100 by 100 tiles is just so advantageous so i also have of course as always a uh, blueprint book available i will it would, you can find the link in the description below and uh, you can snatch those blueprints if you like you can make your own just please remember to align the first city block with the rails otherwise you will be regretting it and i wanted this to be a short tutorial because it's just a city block but i just don't have the ability to make short tutorials i guess so if you are still awake thank you very much for watching and i hope that you have enjoyed it if you have hit the like button it helps me and the youtube algorithm show that this is an interesting thing leave a comment below if you have something uh, you want to add or questions or anything like that or join the discord that's also a great place to and if you want to see more content then consider subscribing it's only about 50 or less than 50 percent of the viewers on the channel who are subscribed and i'm a bit surprised about this so if you are not subscribed well i'm hope you will consider it at least and if you want to watch more of this content or be part of the design process for upcoming uh, design work or have ideas then i'm streaming as i mentioned i'm streaming factorio on twitch as well live streaming and uh, i would do encourage you to drop by it's really fun i'm streaming another let's play on tuesday thursdays and sundays but i'm also playing making these workshops on mondays and the address is twitch tv slash needles link in the description below and with that thank you very much for watching hope you have enjoyed it and maybe learned a thing or two until next time stay effective